the Americas, home to millions of species of animal who clash in savage battles of survival. But what happens when the new world's most ruthless killers turn against each other? Animals fight tooth and claw against their own kin to win food, territory, and rights to the bloodline. In the wild badlands of the Americas, there are no rules. This is Animal Fight Night. One of America's most iconic beasts, the grizzly bear. Heavyweight champions of Animal Fight Night. The only thing that scares a grizzly is another grizzly. They can charge at over 30 miles per hour and bite with enough force to crush a bowling ball. Their strength and speed is thanks to a 1,000 pound body packed with muscle concentrated in their shoulders, hump, and buttocks. One source of their strength is salmon. Grizzlies can eat 40 a day. That's 100,000 calories. Male bears are twice the size of females. But females need to catch more fish to feed their young and keep themselves fighting fit. 40% of bear cubs don't reach adulthood, often falling prey to mountain lions, wolves, or even adult male grizzlies. So females are ferocious when they're protecting their cubs. This mama bear shows her cubs how to fish. They learn by mimicking her. She dives in, but accidentally runs into another bear. In the confusion, a rival female steals her fish. Mama Bear is furious and attacks. Three-inch claws are as long as human fingers, twice as long as the claws on her hind paws. Her swipe could shred skin, but thick fur protects the bear's body. The skin around her neck is 20 times thicker than a human's. The rival female has given the fish to her own cubs. Mama won't stand for it. But she's bitten off more than she can chew. She can't win. So backs down. The rival cubs eat their salmon dinner. While Mama Bear returns to her young empty-handed. Luckily, there are plenty more fish in the sea. And many more fights in the Americas. Our next contender proves you don't have to be big to be a psychotic killing machine. Because one of the top killers of starlings 
is other starlings. Their weapons of choice, beaks and claws, aimed right at the brain. Breeding season, and a male starling needs a nest to attract a female. This proud homeowner scored a piece of prime real estate, and that got him the girl. But in starling world, competition for males is intense. Rival females want to take her place, and they're willing to kill for it. Immediately, a threat. The husband is building a nest for eggs. He leaves to find raw materials. A female intruder seizes the moment. She flies in to find the wife home alone. But the wife won't give in without a fight. Far away, the husband has no idea his home is under attack. They try to pin each other down using their claws. She struggles on. The invader uses her deadly weapon. Going for the kill. Aiming through the eye for her brain. The husband returns to a shocking scene. He freezes. They're exhausted. For many bird species, males act as bystanders when females fight. but not starlings. He intervenes, not to help his wife, but to stop her fighting, so he can have two wives. They take it outside. The wife isn't sharing her home or man with anyone. 10% of starling deaths are caused by fights over nests. The husband tries again. It's getting too complicated for the intruder. The wife has protected her home, whether the husband likes it or not. If they can keep it safe, the couple will have several fledglings. But the sky is filled with rival starlings. This mating season, is far from over. The seasons don't get longer than in the Canadian Arctic. Here, only the hard endure. And they don't come harder than the muskox. Ice Age survivors. Muskox shared this land with woolly mammoth. They weigh over 800 pounds and live in small nomadic herds. These ancient warriors get along just fine for most of the year until it's time to mate, when male horns become a deadly weapon and muskox become the battering rams of the animal kingdom. This six-year-old bull was pushed out of his herd by its dominant male. And now wanders the tundra alone. Picking up the musky scent of a bull from another herd.
he spots his target. The Big Chief. Eight years old, the Chief is bigger, but size isn't everything. If the youngster can oust him, he'll win a harem of eight cows. It's a battle that kills one in ten, but it's worth a shot to continue his bloodline. The raging bull approaches the big chief. The big chief tilts his head, showing off his horns. But his rival isn't intimidated. They swing their heads back and forth. This is a clear statement. It's fight time. The bulls back up around 65 feet to gain speed, inflicting maximum pain on their enemy. To continue their bloodline, or die. They charge, colliding horns first. The equivalent of a head-on car crash at 30 miles per hour. Armored skulls help cushion the impact. Four inch thick horn and three inches of bone shield the brain to absorb the shock. Even an armored skull can't hold out forever. One of these headbangers is going down. Headbang after bone-crushing headbang. For these muskox, the fight for a harem goes on. They collide with a force of almost one ton. Impact is so powerful, it shunts through the spinal column. Vertebra five times bigger than a human's helps soak up the strain. Between each soda can-sized bone, three inches of cartilage that compresses, absorbing the shock like a mini airbag. After 10 charges, the Big Chief is defeated. He's escaped death. But at his age, it's likely he's had his last season of mating. He'll join a herd of other bachelors to live out his days. For the raging bull, it was worth risking his life. He will continue his bloodline and pass the baton to the next generation. For our next slippery contender, mating season is just beginning. The coach whip snake. Unlike other snakes, coach whips get going in the midday sun. They're active and super aggressive. <laughs> Holy crap, dude! It's spring, and this coach has one thing on his mind. He's on the lookout for a lady, but instead, he's slithering straight into trouble. Hikers stumble across him. That's vicious. In a deadly fight with another male coach whip. The enemy has coach's head in his mouth. Oh, you've got him in a headlock. Blood is pouring out. A coach whip is armed with razor-sharp teeth, four rows on their upper jaw, and two below. All point backwards to help draw prey down the throat. 
These snakes don't kill their victim. They just eat it alive. Coach doesn't want to be on the menu. He pulls an awesome move. Oh my gosh, the one that's been eaten is now biting the other one's body. Clamping his jaws over the enemy's windpipe, both trying to suffocate the other to death. Coach loses his grip after a flip from the enemy. That's amazing. Suddenly, both sense another danger. With no external ears, the coach whip has poor hearing. Instead, it senses vibrations through the ground. Both snakes pick up the movement of human bystanders. Distracted, they break free from each other and race off into the scrubland where the fight will continue until one of them gets his girl or dies trying. Our next contender is one of the mountain's most solitary creatures. One of three species of wild cat native to North America. Meet the lynx. Their paws are three times the size of a house cat. When they come face to face with another lynx, the gloves are off. For no rules, hand to hand. The Canadian wilderness. Deep snow makes movement difficult. Staying alive in the freezing temperatures is even harder. This lone lynx is four times the size of a house cat. He has a territory of 15 square miles to hunt on and will defend it with his all. He has a warm coat to survive the cold. Long legs with big fluffy paws work like snowshoes, enabling quick movement through deep powder. Perfect for hunting hares, the main part of his diet. He can spot a mouse at 250 feet. Tufts of hair at the tips of his ears enhance hearing by picking up the smallest sound vibrations. The terrifying sound makes a driver stop his car and start filming. The lone lynx has found a wanderer on his territory. With food scarce, he can't afford to lose land. Paws hit like boxing gloves. They slam each other to the ground. The loner lashes out with a paw. The wanderer bites his claw in return. 
changing tactics, the loner flips on his back. But this is not a move of submission. He now has all four sets of claws in the air. So the wanderer can't get into attack without risking his life. There's too much at stake to continue. With this strategic masterstroke, the loner has won. The wanderer won't trespass here again. In North America's towns and cities, one of the most surprising contenders in Animal Fight Night, a small critter with a big problem and a furious temper. Cue the shrew, an animal who must eat every three hours or face death. So when shrews compete for food, they use tooth, claw, and deadly venom to become suburbia's most savage fighting machines. Almost blind, Shrews are prey for foxes, raccoons, dogs, and just about everything. Against the odds, this old soldier has reached his first birthday. But he can't hide forever. He has to come out and eat every few hours. The shrew has one of the fastest metabolic rates of all animals. To stay alive, they must eat 90% of their body weight every day or face starvation. With such a high need for food, he simply can't afford to share. This guy will eat bugs, flies, and snails. And if he finds another shrew on his patch, he'll eat him too. When this hungry trespasser drops in on the old soldier's turf, it's blind rage. There's no taming this shrew. Landing his target is tough. With poor eyesight, shrews use smell, hearing, touch, and echolocation, like dolphins and bats. Shrews transmit and receive sound waves to pinpoint their opponent's location. Both shrew's strategy is to use their front feet to pin down the opponent and strike with a vicious bite. Their teeth deliver the ultimate weapon, venom. Delivered through grooves in the teeth, it can kill 200 mice with a single dose. But neither shrew can land the killer bite. The trespasser tries to get back in the game, but once bitten, twice shy. This guy is done. He decides it's not worth his life and hits the road. Our old soldier heads out for dinner. This battle may be won, but a shrew's war is never over. Found in America's Southwest states, our next combatant might look like a dragon from a Hollywood fantasy movie. But this scaly bad boy is 100% non-fiction. One of only a handful of venomous lizards in the world. With a split-second bite and killer sharp claws, 
This is the Gila Monster. We won't win. This Gila Monster is one of North America's biggest lizards. He always goes it alone. And if there's one thing he hates, it's sharing. After a winter of hibernation, it's high noon and time to eat. Our lone ranger comes out of his burrow, only to find there's a stranger in town. Time for an ultimate lizard showdown. Using any means necessary to sink venomous teeth straight to the head. A Gila Monster Shootout. The Lone Ranger and the Outlaw try to psych each other out. The Ranger makes a lightning draw. Gila monsters can take in over three times as much oxygen as other lizards, meaning that they can fight intensively for longer. This is a mega monster match. With a bite as unrelenting as a bulldog, once they've got a grip, they don't let go. The ranger pulls a smackdown. The outlaw dazed. The ranger flips upside down to deliver the knockout. Unlike snakes, Gila monsters store venom in their bottom jaw, pumping it through grooved teeth as they chew enemy flesh. Upside down, gravity helps the venom flow into the wound more quickly. Only five drops of Gila venom will kill a dog in just 15 minutes. The outlaw is immune to the ranger's poison, but the bite still hurts like hell. Enough to win the fight and send the outlaw defeated, riding off into the sunset. But in America, another bad boy bandit is never far away. The neighborhood raccoon is an animal with an unusual skill. With longer back legs than front, these guys are all about smarts. They can rotate hind feet to point backwards, climbing down trees head first, if the branches hold up. This one-year-old raccoon has grown up in the country where raccoons share, and there's room for everyone. Now, like lots of raccoons, he's heading for town, where food seems plentiful. Problem is, there are 20 times the number of raccoons in American towns and cities than in rural areas. So the country boy has some serious competition. City raccoons use their smarts to hustle food. Using a wide lower body and low center of gravity to push over large objects like trash cans. They have dexterous fingers. The area of their brain dedicated to the sense of touch is among the greatest of all known mammals. They soak their paws to soften hard skin making them even more touch sensitive. Black bandit masks may enhance night vision and help keep glare out of their eyes.
Now the country boy has been eyeballed in bandit territory. This raccoon is ready to defend his food. Snacks down. It's time for a smackdown. They size each other up. Equally matched, this fight will be down to skill. Country Boy snaps. It doesn't phase the band. Nervous, the boy has second thoughts, but he hasn't eaten for days. This downtown throwdown is about to get ugly. In this street fight, anything goes. Raccoons fight mean and dirty to unleash their killer move, the Death Shake. For these raccoons, there's a feast at stake. Fur flies. The country boy grabs the bandit by the tail, as far from his mouth as possible to avoid being bitten. Bandit gets the boy down. Time for the killer move. Forty teeth, including four sharp canines, clamp on to Country Boy's neck. With a move usually used to stun prey, the bandit tries to disorient the boy with vicious shaking. Time to take out the trash and go in for the kill. The law shows up. A distraction, saving the country boy's skin. He gets away with it this time, but this boy's got a long way to go to become a bandit of the burbs. Three thousand five hundred miles away, one of the largest wild animals in South America, the guanaco. This continent's hardiest and most adaptable fight night contenders. Guanacos live all over South America. From Patagonia to Peru. And they have the nastiest tactics of all our fighters, going right for the family jewels. This six-year-old head honcho lives with his harem of 10 females and their offspring on his 20-acre territory. Female guanacos are fickle. They want a male who can keep them safe, keep them fed, and father chulengos, baby guanacos. The head honcho can never relax. Over half a million wild guanacos roam South America. Competition is rife. Honcho's next threat looms on the horizon. This four-year-old bachelor has Honcho's harem in his sights. The bachelor charges. He swings his neck like a club, but misses. Second time, Honcho's not so lucky. 
The chase is on. There's only around 60% as much oxygen as at sea level, but guanacos can run at incredible speeds of 40 miles per hour. Guanacos have adapted to live at high altitudes. Their heart is 15% larger than is usual for mammals their size. A teaspoon of guanaco blood contains 68 million red blood cells that carry oxygen around the body four times that of a human. The bachelor catches Honcho. Landing a powerful bite. The two front teeth and two canines are called fighting teeth. They're sharp, dagger-like, and guanacos know just how to use them. They even try to bite off the other's cajones. But Hancho doesn't want his avocados turning to guacamole. So he heads for the hills. Defeated, he's had his last tango with these girls. While the bachelor has his pick of new dance partners. This regular change of guard stops inbreeding. The bachelor will become a poppy and enjoy the family life. For as long as he can hold on to it. Brawls for the bloodline break out all over the Americas. High summer, mating season for stellar sea lions. This big daddy rules the beach. All 25 females here are his to mate with. In return, this rookery and the 20 nautical miles of ocean around it is under his protection. Perfect for sunbathing, playing, and even some surfing. But nothing lasts forever. Big Daddy has already fought off an invading bull trying to take his place. And the next brutal challenge is only a bloody wave away. <laughs> This sea lion cannot rest. He's so busy watching for rivals who want to take his beach harem. The big daddy hasn't even eaten in a month. Insurgent charges behind enemy lines, right onto Daddy's beach. It's a battle of might. His flexible spine allows Daddy to draw back his neck and inject maximum force into an 800-pound head slam. To win, one sea lion has to force the other down the cliff into the sea. Big Daddy gets high ground and leverage to shunt the insurgent down the cliffside. To help, a nasty bite. One inch canines designed not for chewing, but for tearing flesh.
Daddy inches the insurgent closer to defeat. With one final push, bloodied and injured, the insurgent flees. Big Daddy has made it through another mating season. Time to get his strength up for next year, when the fighting starts over. For our next contender, it's all about that one girl. In Chile, Juliet sits at the top of these trees, waiting for her Romeo. At the bottom, Romeo. He's a Darwin beetle, on the brink of extinction as the world heats up. Bigger than a baseball, male Darwins can be three and a half inches long. Jaws make up almost half their length and are used to attract the ladies and dispatch the competition. Romeo heads upwards. Meeting another beetle on the same mission. Nothing will keep this Romeo from his Juliet. The rules of engagement. Use jaws to reach over a rival's head and hook under his wings. Then lift and throw your enemy off the tree. No problem for an insect who can lift 120 times his own body weight. Romeo tries pulling the suitor off the tree, but the rival holds tight. These fights can end in death as one beetle rips the head from the other's torso. Romeo pries his opponent from the tree and throws him 80 feet to the ground. With one of the hardest exoskeletons of all insects, the fall is more annoying than fatal. For Romeo, Another challenger is right around the corner. Romeo wins again. And again. And again. Finally, he finds his Juliet. After climbing 80 feet and battling many suitors, He's ready for his reward and to do his part in keeping his kind alive. But she's not so keen. He gives chase, finally using his jaws to catch her. He continues his bloodline. His babies will be born and eat wood found on the forest floor. So to save his partner the time of climbing down, he gives her a helping hand. What a guy. Hopefully, there'll be many more high-wire Darwin beetles to come.